Hello everyone, my name is Pixhorifs, and this video is sponsored by NVIDIA, who are kind enough, with an assist from their friends at scan.co.uk, to hook me up with a new RTX graphics card so I could bring you an in-depth look at Minecraft with RTX. And oh boy do I have some stuff to show you. I'm sure you've heard about it by now, but if you haven't, Minecraft with RTX is a collaboration between NVIDIA and the Minecraft team to bring real-time path tracing to Minecraft Bedrock Edition on Windows 10. Path tracing is a form of ray tracing which changes everything about the way lighting works in Minecraft. It allows light to bounce around the room the way it does in real life, lighting surfaces and picking up colour as it goes. Shadows are more realistic, reflections and refractions are possible and look beautiful, and it's all calculated on your Windows PC in real time. This is the kind of thing that would take 3D animators hours, if not days, and multiple computers to render frame by frame. If you wanted to render a Minecraft build like this for screenshots, you'd probably have to import it into a 3D graphics program and light it all afterwards. But with RTX, now it all happens live in front of you while you're playing the game. Now you might have seen realistic lighting effects applied to Minecraft before and be wondering why this is such a big deal. For a start, Bedrock Edition hasn't really had access to this kind of capability before. Path tracing is also a huge step up from what you might expect from shader packs, and it mostly comes down to how immersive it feels when light behaves like it does in the real world. Seeing the glow from a neon light illuminating the street below, or torchlight glowing against the walls when you step down into a cave, really helps the world feel real in a way that you would never expect from a voxel game like Minecraft. The six maps included in the Minecraft RTX beta have done an outstanding job of showing what these kind of lighting effects are capable of. Even with Minecraft's default textures, you can see realistic refractions in water, the sunlight casting long shadows and blocks reflecting light onto each other, torches and lava glowing in caves, and it still feels like the same game we all love playing, just with the realism cranked up a bit. And each time I've stepped into one of these RTX worlds, it's been like exploring a new content update. There's so much around you that feels new and different. The atmosphere is enhanced in a big way for survival players, but where I think Minecraft RTX really shines is for creative builders. I'd argue it could even be more important than the Minecraft team adding a ton of new blocks. Being able to consider environment lighting and coloured lighting in creative builds, encourages you to approach the building process in a totally different way. It also encouraged me to take a different approach to this video, so we've started off here with a bit of a cinematic segment, but in a second we're going to jump into some real gameplay and I'll show you what Minecraft with RTX feels like when you're playing it. For now, enjoy this footage of me sneaking up on a cat. Hey folks, thanks for watching that little introduction. Welcome into the RTX beta. So there are six maps that you can download from the marketplace if you have access to the RTX beta, and we're going to be going through a little bit of each one of them here to show you what these are about. These have all been made by members of the Minecraft community. We've got the Aquatic Adventure up here that is made by Dr. Bond. We have the Color, Light and Shadow RTX Showcase by Pearlescent Moon, Crystal Palace by Gemini Tay, Imagination Island by Blockworks, Elysium Fire's Neon District, which you've already seen a fair amount of in the introduction there, and Temples and Totems by Razzleberries. So let's head into the Aquatic Adventure. First, we can just create a brand new world using this as our template. Let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. We're going to be in adventure mode, checking this map out in peaceful so we don't have to worry about mobs or anything like that. And here we are already underwater. So I guess it probably helps that we're in adventure mode, but look already at the way light is coming down from the watery surface there. It's so cool seeing stuff like this in action because those rays filtering down from the sky there are actually 
behaving the way natural light does. And once they hit the ground here, the lighting will actually reflect off into other parts of the room. And so if we completely close that off there, regardless of what other light was in here, you just wouldn't see as much natural light lighting up the corners of the room here. Of course, we've got our sea lanterns up here as well, and you can see already that those are doing something to light the surface here as well. <laughs> it's really cool exploring this whole area underwater. And not to mention, the surface of the water here is actually reflective. So if I am in, yeah, if I'm in first person with the HUD enabled, you can just see my arm floating in there, I guess. It doesn't enable, like, it doesn't render your entire character model until you go into third person and you can swim around like that. That is so cool looking, just being able to see the reflection of the player underneath there. But let's explore this map, first of all, because there is a lot of really cool stuff here. It's actually kind of strange, the mirror effect that you get underwater here, because the water surface in Minecraft is usually so calm, so you end up with a very still reflection of what's going on down here on the seabed. But that naturally kind of adjusts as you look up and as you see the sun above there, you can see the kind of watery texture creeping into it. That's so, so cool. There must be a lot of stuff to explore down here. Looks like we are swimming into a giant clam, but it does look like that's just the surface there. And yep, look at that. This whole thing starts to come into view and these hanging lights up there are reflecting on the surface of the water as well. That is stunning. All right, let's see if I can find an entrance to this because it looks like there is a specific way I'm supposed to enter over here. I've gotten off track and off course just exploring this place. Maybe I'm supposed to head this way. I've come back to this section where I can kind of swim along this underwater road, this kind of collapsed, sunken section, this very Atlantean look to it. And yeah, I think this is probably the direction I'm supposed to go if we're swimming in this direction. And yep, that's definitely taking us to the gateway over here. So it looks like we are meant to enter via this way after all but look at the lighting in here already it's so cool seeing some of these lighting effects get used and the light emitting a specific color as you travel wow and it's very it's almost disorienting looking at the way the light bends in the water all right let's climb these steps and see what dr bond has in store for us down here wow now this is something truly special i guess we got to follow the path and go in through this central section here yes Oh, how beautiful. What an excellent map. I love just seeing those pillars disappear into the sky up there, and the sun is so intense bearing down on this whole area. Let's take another look at that from the outside, because it almost, like, the way it curves because of the curvature of the water that's falling around here, and then you step out and your perspective completely changes because of the way the water magnifies what's in here. Super cool. I really, really love this. And look, look at how flat that seems. That's just a one block deep section of water, but it looks like it's almost a slab or something. It looks almost deeper. I feel like I should be able to wade around inside of this. That's really quite clever. All right, let's hop up into the center here and see if there is... Oh, wow. Okay, uh, can I... Should I walk out over this? I don't know if I should or not. That feels a little bit dangerous to me, but maybe that's a section we're supposed to dive into. Is there water down here? I really can't tell. Let's give it a try. Oh, no, I've just landed in an empty room. And, oh, oh, okay. So we've, we've fallen a long way, it seems like. And maybe there is something else to be found down here. Or maybe this is just the way to get to the rest of the palace. Look at the, the lighting in those window recesses. It's just so nice. It's really nice seeing that kind of almost like pinkish lighting off of the stone. And that's all natural stone, so that should just look grey normally. Oh, we got a sign here. What does that say? Need a hint? Step onto the pressure plates. Oh, so there's actually some kind of mysterious quest that we're supposed to be going on. I guess this is an adventure map. Uh, something about an obsidian door. Oh, okay. Uh, I do have my window slightly resized so that it cuts off all of the debug info at the top of the screen, but there are chests in here to find. I could explore this thing all day. This is so, so nice, but I don't want to spend too much time on here because I want to be able to get to the other maps as well. So if you're looking for an adventure experience, if you're looking for a quest, check this map out. All right, folks, here we are in the next map. This is Pearlescent Moon's Color, Light and Shadow Showcase. I really wanted to take a look at this one on camera with you guys because I've already had a stroll around and there's some really cool stuff going on. Let's go into zone one here. There are a couple of buttons around on the floor which allow you to change the time of day so that you can see the different light coming through the ceiling and these kind of side apertures here and there. There are blocks which have actually been retextured. This is a block of emerald. This one's a block of diamond. They've actually been retextured so that you can 
play around with them as luminescent blocks. And part of the beta actually allows texture pack makers to set custom levels of reflectivity and luminescence so that you can actually play around with some of this stuff. And is that a mirror? I think you'll find it is. Oh boy, look at that. So we're actually mirrored on that side when I'm in third person. In first person, all you see is the arm. So if I put that away, yep, all you can see is my arm. That's really quite disorienting. And if I hide the HUD, I disappear entirely like a vampire. But anyway, let's move on here. You can set the time to noon or to 100. So the very early hours of the day. And that will be really obvious in this room here. If we set the time to 100, like so we'll just get some early morning light creeping in through the tops of those windows and the lamps here are doing a lot more to illuminate the walls on all sides but you'll notice when you put the trap doors around them like you would in a street light design in regular minecraft it actually blocks off some of the light so when you open those up and close them it adjusts the way the light behaves on the surrounding walls and of course it takes a moment or two to kind of adjust a little bit you'll notice the shadow sort of appears briefly there and then creeps back in but the overall effect is amazing and then when we set it to noon again you can see that the light creeps in from the top now and while it still adjusts a little bit when we move those trap doors it doesn't adjust it nearly as much because the light from the sun overhead is actually lighting up each of these recesses as we walk down here and <laughs> look at that the the old dragon egg lamp trick i see how it is this next area actually really looks like a really cute aquarium and i love it so much this is showcasing some of the underwater effects of the rtx pack and you can kind of see how it affects things through different colors of glass as well we got some light blue stained glass here but with some green lighting behind it and really giving that kind of aquatic vibe it's so cool seeing the puffer fish swimming around inside of the tank that's super nice and look how the glass here kind of refracts the background behind it that's super cool all right let's wander on through here there's a few tanks that we can actually get in and swim around if we wanted to but the whole vibe of this place is so nice it actually feels like a modern aquarium which i absolutely love and as we walk in here you'll be able to see as we look around a few squid in the tanks a few tropical fish and sea turtles and stuff like that as well the water is above us also and we can just walk around here and explore it at our leisure it's super super pretty i want to bust open these tanks and go in there and play with the turtles but probably best saved for another time i think also, side note here, this is a really nice bench design. I might have to steal that, Pearl. I'm sorry, but it's it's really cool looking. All right, moving on to zone three. We have some room examples in here, and let's take a quick look around. We can set the time to noon by stepping on this pressure plate, and as we wander in, you will see why. We have the light filtering in naturally from the outside into this aquarium, and that is lighting up the tank beautifully, while the lights in the room kind of have a different vibe to them and <laughs> I like the fact the potion stands glow a little bit that metallic base texture as well so so pretty I like it a lot this is <laughs> such a nice little room a little scientific lab set up over here it says I recommend to set the time to 100 and that's probably going to yeah the, the light floods in at the end of this station platform again super pretty I like it and in here you can really get a view of how the red and green lamps are combining to make that orange light in the center there I talked about this in my initial first look at Minecraft with RTX but I love the fact that there are colored lights that can combine colors and you get that natural kind of red amber and green kind of stoplight thing reflecting off of this polished surface on the walls there very very cool this room though this room is about to blow our minds i'm going to walk in here in third person so you can see the reflections because there are mirrored surfaces in this room stretching into infinity and it is mind-blowing to me that a graphics card is able to replicate this sort of level of infinity and the reflections bouncing off of each other but look at this this is so absurd. It's like looking at yourself through the portals in Portal. I cannot believe how beautiful that looks. And to be honest, I'm into the dance floor as well. That is very nice. But reflections like this in real time in Minecraft, unbelievable. Still super excited about stuff like this. This is the stuff I'm really excited about. Game examples for light and color manipulation. And like I said, I have a bit of an idea for how I'm going to execute one of those myself. But we're in survival mode right now. And I think we'll probably hop over here, jump on this block, and let's see what happens. So now, what this is triggering is a sequence of lights that will open up in the ceiling around here. At least I think that's what it's doing. I don't know if it's 
Is it shining the light down from above or from a window up there maybe? It's at least causing some of these buttons to be illuminated so you know which ones to step on. And this is something that it's very difficult to do in regular Minecraft is illuminate specific areas that you need to go with this natural light that's a little bit more subtle and not just lighting up a redstone lamp telling you where to go. But as you can see, that one over there is illuminated. That one is not. So we know that this is the path we need to follow. Let's hop over here as well to get to this one. And there's water down there to catch us if we fall. And finally, we can hop over these last few obstacles and hop onto this last button. And bam, the entrance opens up on the opposite side of the room. Fantastic little puzzle, only really possible because we have realistic lighting effects and the light can shine in through different areas of the room. At a different time of day, that would be a completely different puzzle and the light would shine into different places. So that's really quite special. And once again, mirrored surfaces in this room. You can kind of see me over there in the corner. All right, let's see what we have in here. This is what I'm talking about. This is a puzzle which does require the ability to distinguish red and green. So apologies in advance to any colorblind folks is this a book that we can read yes create colored light with stained glass match the color of each room and step on the green plate to confirm your choice and open the door this is a little puzzle which is encouraging you to step on these pressure plates around here and that lets light in from a specific side of the room so for example if i step on this one that opens up the first block in the circle the next one opens up there and it shines through these blocks at a different angle each time so the idea is that we can step on these blocks and each time it will illuminate the blocks around it to have a different color in the center that one is completely dark i think because it goes through a few different colors that one's got a little bit of a red and a little bit of green in there and that's how we solve the puzzles in this next section of the room so this clearly wants us to create a little bit of green so let's stand on a couple of these and see oh did i get that first time i think i did so the light is now filtering in through there and it's hitting a yellow block and a blue block, which is combining in the center here to cast a green field of light in the middle. Let's see if I step on a different one. There you go. It's now coming down from close to the center and that's traveling through one of the blue blocks, maybe a little bit of the red as well to make a kind of lavendery blue kind of color. But I'm pretty confident that is just green there on the floor. So I'm going to confirm my selection by stepping on this pressure plate. And yes, we got it right. And the door opened up thanks to some command block magic no doubt this one clearly wants us to make red so let's step on that that is oh that's a little bit of kind of pink and purple let's go around the outside here yep looks like that one is the red one we want let's confirm our selection looks like we got that one right as well and now combining light to get purple let's see what we need to step on here that looks kind of pink that's a combination of green and red that looks sufficiently purple to me. Let me step on a couple of the others to see if I've got this right. That's a yellow. That's an orange. Yep, I think that is all the way purple. Let's see if we got that one right. We did. Awesome, awesome stuff. I like this game. I like this game a lot. And right now, I think I'm going to go into a creative copy of this world that I have already tried out. And I'm going to show you a puzzle I've created all by myself. And this right here is what I'm talking about. I've put together a fairly simple colored light puzzle in order to open this door at the very end. You just have to combine different colors of light to match the light that's being cast down onto the floor here. And that's actually being done through natural light. The time in the world right now is set to noon. And as you can see, we have squares of orange and purple stained glass in the ceiling, which are casting that color of light down onto the floor, giving you a hint about how to complete the puzzle. As I enable these levers, or actually disable them because they're pulling blocks back from in front of these pistons, you'll see two colored blocks light up either side of the door. A purple one on this side and an orange one on that side. And of course you would think those two are lit up now so the door should be opened. But they're only lit up because you're combining all three colors of light in the sort of RGB pattern here and that will naturally produce white light. To solve the puzzle you need to reveal the two colors of light that combine to make the color of the block and the color of this patch of light here. And to do that of course we're going to remove the green one from the equation so the red and blue combine here to make purple and as you can see that's perfectly illuminating the purple block at the end of the room there. Now on this side of course we need to try and make orange so let's enable these. They are in a different pattern on this side with the red, the green and the blue there so we need to make sure we disable the blue one and after a couple of seconds the light readjusts and the door opens and you can walk on out. 
And of course, the lighting engine of Minecraft is not reacting to the color of the light changing itself. I've just done a little bit of redstone behind the scenes here, putting a bit of delay on so the room has time to adjust to the different colors of light, and then kind of making an AND gate so that you can't enable one switch and not the other, making sure that you end up pulling both levers in both directions in order to open the door. But I really like this style of puzzle. I feel like it's kind of clever. It could provide so many more opportunities for interesting puzzle solving mechanics in your Minecraft world. So give this a go if you've got access to the RTX beta. Have a try at combining these yourself. Next up, we find ourselves in a survival map created by Gemini Tay. This is a ship that we're in the hold of currently. We're going to make our way outside. Is there anything stashed in the corners here? Oh, we got a pickaxe. We got a little bit of charcoal. Great stuff. I will need a little bit of that. Don't need any cake for right now, but I wonder if there's anything else. A shovel, even better. All right, <laughs> let me grab that. Let me take a crafting table and a furnace with me because it will help to have those on our little adventure. And then let's step off the ship and see what wonders await us outside. Oh, stepping onto the deck into the fresh air at long last. And uh, I think I see land in the distance. All right, let's up the render distance a little bit. I'm pretty sure my computer can take it at this point. That's more like it. Now we're seeing the build in all its glory. It is worth noting that the menu does say there might be a couple of performance issues if you increase the render distance here. Uh, but there we go. Look at this fantastic world that has been laid out before us by Gemini Tay. I wonder if I can walk the plank. Doesn't seem like there's any law books to read or anything like that, but I should probably cast off and see if I can swim to shore over here. <laughs> I've got a dolphin swimming with me. Look at that. And wow, can we get into the palace through this little shaft down here? I wonder if maybe we can. Uh, but I'm hearing... Oh, gosh. Oh, no. The drowned are after me. Ah! <laughs> this is a survival map, after all. I did manage to get myself some raw cod from, I don't know, somewhere? <laughs> Maybe there's a little bit of stuff we can poach in these barrels. Yes, we can go fishing if we want to. Probably won't save us from the drowned, though. This map is absolutely beautiful. I love the castle here. I love the dragons circling it. And you saw a little bit of this in the intro as well, so I'm not going to dwell on it and spend too much time here. Probably just going to grab a couple of berries to snack on if I need to but this is a survival world that if you're exploring the minecraft rtx beta you can just use as a starting point for your own adventures and your own builds here in the rtx world and i think it's a really really nice place to start you've got a nice big house available to you already look at this <laughs> so so nice and with minimal lighting inside of here it's amazing what gemini Tay has done to make this place look a little bit realistic unfortunately we may have to contend with a couple of spiders dancing around on top of the the storage here. I'm just gonna whack at it with a shovel and see if there is any better stuff in here. Nope, looks like we're probably gonna have to work with our own tools and work with what we have. I'll do this Minecraft dungeon style and go into battle with a pickaxe for the moment. Something that's really striking me about this map is how much the room is illuminated by the light from the outside and as you step in it starts to, you know, your eyes sort of adjust to the light a little bit as you go in and then as you look further down into the areas which are untouched by natural light they start to feel dark by comparison and that's all being adjusted dynamically on the go which is really great stuff. I wonder if there's anything down here that I can poach a look at that glass window is spectacular looking man this map just goes up and up and up forever there are staircases and ladders and it ends up in a room like this where there's a dragon head oh what a wonderful treasure at the end of my little trip and i think that is probably where i will leave it but there's so much more to explore in this map so once again, I recommend checking this out if you've got access to the RTX beta. Next up, we have Blockworks Imagination Island, and this is a really neat map simply because it makes heavy use of a more cartoony texture pack, showing you that the Minecraft RTX experience is not just confined to one or two texture packs. It can work with a whole variety of them, and you can see, once again, the light filtering in, casting those shadows. We are in survival mode. Let's go and explore. I'm pretty sure this one is more like a theme park style thing. So let's step out into the light and see what is out here. Wow, look at this. I think I may have to turn my render distance up again, though. I want to be able to see all of this. And I am so glad I did. <laughs> it starts you off with a default render distance every time you load into one of these maps. But look at this. What a castle over there. Another castle in the distance. Or is that a cathedral type of thing with a gateway in it? Amazing stuff. 
There is so much to explore here. This is a full-on theme park. It's got a Ferris wheel. It's got rides. I want to go and buy a corn dog or something. <laughs> this really makes me feel like I'm at Disneyland. But you'll notice one of the things they've been able to do with the texture pack is build in sort of subtle reflections to some of the blocks. So I'm not sure what exactly this block I'm walking on is. I imagine it's granite by the color. <laughs> they kind of keep the colors sort of similar, but you can see in the distance there, it feels a little bit more polished, like these are slick tiles to them, whereas some of the other materials have much more of a matte finish to them. And it's really nice how you can adjust that stuff. Once again, you can do that with texture packs that you want to create. So you can make tile textures like this a lot more shiny if you want to. You can adjust the luminosity of certain things, the reflectivity of them. And it's, it's really, really nice being able to explore in a different texture pack to get an idea of how it's going to feel each time you run into a new world and if you want to use a texture pack of your own. Is there a roller coaster somewhere around here? Is there a minecart ride? Please tell me there's a minecart cart ride. I want to go on the monorail. I want to experience everything this map has to offer. This is so, so cool. Oh, click the button for churros. Don't mind if I do. Yes. <laughs> it says bread, but it means churros. Nom, 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 nom. I will definitely have those. Yes, please. Oh boy. <laughs> I wanted a corn dog, but I'll absolutely take churros. I had to come in here and see this because there is light being cast through the stained glass windows of this kind of cathedral space. And it's all landing on the tiles here and being you know, lit up in all of these beautiful different colors. That is such a cool effect and very subtle as well. It just feels like natural light coming in through the windows. Very, very nice. And I expect as the sun moves around, it would end up coming through the opposite side instead and these colors would start to disappear in time. The sun is, yep, it's up there right now. So those are going to shorten eventually and all of the light is acting the way it should in the real world. Whoa, okay. I did not even spot this over here. This looks interesting. Oh, here's the minecart ride I've been looking for. Yes, I will absolutely ride. Absolutely, yes. Uh, do, do you want to do you want to give me a push, my friend? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, that's the stuff. All right. <laughs> a theme park ride with Minecraft RTX effects. What could be better at this point? Oh, and that's what I'm talking about. Look at it as we come into this place and all of this stuff lit up by lava. We can dismount the minecart here and take a look at the effects here. Beautiful stuff. <laughs> the bubbling lava all around us, illuminating everything from below in this cavern space. The nether is going to look astonishing. What a ride. What a ride. 10 out of 10 would ride again. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I'd give you a tip if I had literally anything on me. Oh, there's some churros in here. Great. Uh, <laughs> I can at least give you some food. Here you go. Have some churros. And for a different bit of flavor, this is Razzleberry's Temples and Totems map. And I think this guy over there is trying to tell me something, but I just want to explore the world. So I'm sorry if I skip out on the quest for four elemental totems. And I got some starting items in here. Ooh, a little bit of armor. I'll take that with me just in case I run afoul of any creepers while I'm out here. Because this is another survival experience. The Iron Sword. Yep, <laughs> they're trying to give me the quest line here. But I am honestly just here to look around and look at the way the light looks in the distance with the jungle and the reflection of that bridge in the river. This is genuinely phenomenal stuff. Oh boy, yes. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Once again, just seeing the way the light reacts to this environment is really, really cool. It feels so immersive, especially with this texture pack. They've done a great job of the texture of those trees. They really look like giant jungle trees and this is something really special. I'm always forgetting that I'm in Minecraft looking at this because it just looks so real. Just the way the light is working in the world right now feels so realistic. Check this out though, the atmosphere is just incredible in here. I love how they've lit the area up with accents. That's the stuff I'm talking about. This is the kind of stuff that you simply cannot do any other way. Uh oh, uh, whoa, <laughs> have, I, have I summoned something? I've stood on the sacrificial altar of some kind and oh wow, okay, that's revealed a staircase so that I can head on down. Oh, and this is something completely different. Once again, the light being used very, very well here and oh gosh, yeah, I'm being led down this corridor. I'm a little bit worried that there are gonna be monsters leaping out at me from the shadows. But nope, looks like we're okay for now. Yep, there are skeletons over there in the corners. I guess they are probably going to be trying to shoot at me. But I guess I can take care of them. The few well-placed swings of the sword. 
and claim the prize, which is a bunch of concrete powder, <laughs> which can apparently be placed on oak wood planks. Interesting. What does this button do? Oh, hello. Ah, okay. This is a bit of a puzzle. So this section here needs to be built in the image of the section opposite. Right. Let's see what I can do about that then. That should be the last one. I'm pretty sure that looks the same as the opposite side. Yeah. Now, maybe if I press the button again, something will happen. Oh, and it's cleared all the concrete out of my inventory. Is that it? Did I, did I win? Did something end up in this chest? I'm so confused right now. Ah, I think that seems to have unlocked something in the opposite direction here, which is another puzzle. Wow, <laughs> this is super cool. I'm not going to spend it too much more time here, though. I think I have outstayed my welcome and somebody else is perhaps better suited to solve all of these puzzles than I am. But check this map out. Look at all of the details that are on display here. This is really atmospheric stuff. They've made great use of the light in here. Very, very cool stuff. And finally, we're going to return to the Neon District map by Elysium Fire to say thank you to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. And thank you to the fine folks at scan.co.uk who provided the hardware at such short notice. Very much appreciated. A link to Scan's page will be in the description where you can look at their range of RTX cards they have available. Scan.co.uk is the site. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this little look at NVIDIA RTX Minecraft. It is an absolutely phenomenal piece of work. I really think this is <laughs> genuinely going to be very, very exciting for the future of creative Minecraft, and it's never looked prettier, to be honest. Thank you so much for watching this video. My name has been Pixoris. Don't forget to leave a like on it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.